three generation punishment. So if I voted against the state, I would go to prison, my son would go to prison, and if he had a son or a daughter, they would be born in prison and spend the, li the and rest of their life in yeah. prison because their blood is guilty blood. Is that you can ask why you're there. You cannot ask why you're there. Then that you, that's you get executed. Oh my god. So gosh. they they take them and play with their organs and see what helps to make the security forever. He wants to live forever. And put him in the center and then you use an aircraft gun to shoot him, not just guns. So when you shoot somebody like that, you become literally like pieces of meat. So North Korea is a homogeneous country. We are like same genetics, same people, same culture, same language. There's not no diversity in that. The no only tribes, no different no. areas. Everybody's just Korean. North. Okay. Yeah, we were the same Korea with the South Korea. We had a five thousand years of shared history, same country as the same country. So that's mm -hmm. unique. Uh, the, what was based upon of, from that division was, I think something similar to right now, America, is what your ancestors did. That their royalty towards the party's ideology. Okay. So it's not about individual's choice. You cannot join another class. Uh, basically, when Kim Il-sung came into power in the middle 40s and the 1950s, that's when he came and then realized okay, who was a landowner, who was a capitalist, who was an intellectual, you know, who was a, a farmer. And based on their status, their children's status get determined forever. And that's how they say when I was born in the country, my great-great-grandfather handled some land in his yard. And they said I had the oppressor genes and my blood was tainted because of his actions. Wow. So that's how your status get determined. So in a way that America, we divide people based on race. In North Korea, they do that based on the, I think, ideology, what okay. people back then believed in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your so your grandpa owned land. Did they just take the land from him? Yeah. So that was my mother's side. Okay. And my father's side was better. So that's why my father was becoming a party, became a party member. And my mother's side, I think they weren't. Wow. Yeah. How do they how do they confiscate do you know how they confiscate the land? Do you remember or were you too young or So it was just stories we hear, right? It's a in the fifties they had a land reform and that was when the regime was promising to North Korean people that we are going to abolish poverty and inequality in any forms. We are going to be all equally doing well. Everything is going to be taken care of by the government. Everything will be free. Healthcare is going to be free. Housing is going to be free. The food is going to be free. Everything is going to be free. Nobody can ever trade anything, but nobody can ever own anything. They abolished private property. So nobody can own a home. They can own a cow. They can own a car. They can own a house. They can own anything. So, but the thing is, at the time, North Koreans actually believed that that was a Paradise, so here's paradise, right? Is we are equally doing all well. So for that little, people gave everything to the regime at the time, and there was not much of battle between the people giving that to the regime. And the people, some people who did not uh, disagree, they get executed, obviously. There are three generations get executed along with the people who rebel against the I parties. read this, I saw mm -hmm. this in a, so I, also in my research, I watched some documentaries on North Korea. That way some of your story was still surprising to me. So one of the things that I saw was that if you go against the state or if you commit a crime or if you vote the wrong way, mm. then you'll be imprisoned. What I yeah. what I then what came was that they're they voted against the state. I would go to prison, my son would go to prison, and if he had a son or a daughter, then they would be born in prison and spend the, li the and rest of their life in yeah. prison because their blood is guilty blood. Right. Is that is that is that across the board over there? No that, matter what the crime is, or is there a severity? Or yeah, so you know, right, there's no way you can vote wrong way because North Korea election only has one person on the ballot, and it's a open like guard standing there watching you. 
and there's only one choice on the ballot. So it's, you cannot run, like you cannot vote for a different person. Okay. It's a joke, right? It's like, yeah. Or like charade, it's a show. But if you start something against a party, like, okay, I don't believe in communism, then you, of course, get cared. You get executed, obviously, for that. But then your parents, your sisters, brothers, your children, your grandchildren, and up to sometimes eight generations. Eight generations. Yeah. So even the in-laws gets arrested. So your wife's, their family, the in-laws get go together with you. Just for disagreeing with the with the with the state. Yeah. So uh, one person that I know in South Korea, he was born. I mean, he went to Perkin prison camp when he was eight years old. And the very first thing when you arrest and go to political prison camp is that you cannot ask why you're there. You cannot ask why you're there. Then that you that's you get executed. So nobody knows why they end up in the prison. And then for him, he learned many years later that his grandfather, a uh, long time before one day, he was drink, getting drinks with his friend. And then under the alcohol influence, he somehow showed a disagreement with the party's line. But later that friend remembered that saying and then reported to the police. That's why he sat during while they were getting a drink. So he ended up in prison camp, but he could not ask the regime, why did I get here? So most of people don't know why they ended up in the prison camp. Is there any way to get out of it? No. You're in there for life. There's, yeah, a, there's one prison. sentence, and that's a life sentence. And most of them don't last even more than three months. Usually you die from the exhaustion and torture. So, oh, man. Because North Korean regime needs these people. They do a lot of chemical tests on them because they are developing bio weapons and then they doing so much nuclear tests they need to have people need the people to clean those debris oh so they need this labor so they use the they use the prison prison labor yeah so they're doing so they're torturing they're doing experiments and they're using them to clean up nuclear waste which is huge exposure to radiation which will obviously kill you yeah what kind of experiments are they, are they? Many different experiments. A, like even during the Nazi Germany, they test on different gas. Uh, they test on different like injections because they develop a lot of poisons because that they commit a lot of uh, assassin attempts, right? They killed their brother in mm-hmm. Malaysia with those poisons. So they test on different poison, how it cares or not. And they even just cut off their organs and like body tissues to check, you know, how to study some medicine so they can make the dictator, their leader, live forever. So there's more than 10,000 doctors in dedicated North Korea to find a way to make Kim's live forever. So in this study, they need a lot of in- inmates. Oh my god. So gosh. They, they take them and play with their organs and see what helps to make the dictator live forever. He wants to live forever. Yeah. So that's the that's the big experiment. Yeah. Huge. It's called like Mansu Mugang Yonggu. So it's like the Eternal Life uh, Research Institute. They has like 10,000 doctors. Just all day long they are studying that, how they can make the dictator live forever. What do the doctors, what do the doctors think about the dictator? You cannot think about it. In North Korea, if even you are a doctor, you don't get paid a $1 salary each month. You're a slave. You don't choose to become a doctor. They tell you to become a doctor. Yeah. So it's, it's, there's no way you can have an opinion for anything there. What, so, so back to the prison camps, they have a three-month life expectancy. On average, yeah. If they're going to, let's say you get a, a sentence where they're going to execute you and you, you, you don't even know what you're being executed right. for. Yeah. How long are you, is it like America where you're on death row or do they just get it done immediately? It uh, depends when they want to make a case out of you, like uh, want to create a fear to the people. So when Kim Jong-un killed his own uncle, Zhang song tak remember when he came into power and then he one day arrested his uncle publicly, basically what he did was a he made sure all the officials in Pyongyang come 
and put him in the center, and then you use an aircraft gun to shoot him, not just guns. So when you shoot somebody like that, you become little like pieces of meat. Your body just gets exploded. And then he would let the dogs to eat his body. And the officials would like faint and pee in their pants. And that's how he touched them. This is what happens if you do not be royal to, you, to me. So some executions are just throwing stones. So they put their family members, put them in the first row, and then like throw the rock at your family, your wife, your child. So the last thing you see living this world is seeing your child, your husband throwing rock at you and to kill you. Oh man. They, they make sure the families denounce the person first. Wow. Are these public executions? These are uh, I never seen the throwing the rock, but I heard that's what they did in, inside the concentration camp. So they inside the concentration camp, they make sure the son and mother like they stand in the front row and do that, and the other people should throw the rock because Kim Jong Il at the time said that even the bullets are too precious to kill these people, so you should just use rocks to kill them. Wow. Yeah, and then but shooting is usually the public execution that general public goes to watch. Okay. Does the general public enjoy this? No, it's mandatory. It's mandatory. Children is go watch it. Like even you're two years old. If you are, when you go see the public execution, the seating is based upon how young you are. As in, if you're the youngest, you sit in the front row because you're the shortest. So adults goes to back row. But those adults have seen this when they're kid. So they put the children in the front, and then bigger children the behind, and the adults in the back. And then they see people getting executed. How often does this happen? It's there's some seasonal, it's like uh, several times a year, I'm sure, minimum. But sometimes like very often, because those are times where they say showcase time, where they, it's like tightening the bear like really trying to raise the field level as much as they can. So those times are constantly shooting and then sometimes like off and then regime think, okay, we need to do this again and come and shoot more. How many executions per session? It's sometimes, uh, sometimes one, sometimes three, sometimes eight, depending on the case. Okay. So sometimes like the cases were like these people were Hung. So one of the executions my mom saw was a this young man in a collective farm who was dying from TB, tuberculosis, right? Tuberculosis. And then he uh, butchered the collective farm's cow. And then he ate the cow because he was dying from the malnutrition anyway. So they were executing him in the marketplace, just him. And one of the executions I saw was a my friend, actually mother, she distributed a Hollywood movie. So she watched the Hollywood movie and then gave it to her friends. And in North Korea, that's a crime. You cannot watch Hollywood movies. You cannot watch a Hollywood, that's an executable offense. If you ever read a Bible, that's execution. You, if you ever watch a porn, that's execution. If you ever watched a Hollywood movie and distributed, that's execution. And I mean, <laughs> The executions is like this. There's a every front page of North Korean paper has a Kim's portraits, and then you didn't see the page. It's a backwards. You ripped it. That's how you go to political prison camp. Wow. Those are the crimes that we talk about in North Korea as a crime. Even if you, I saw even if you fold a paper and you fold. Yeah. You fold the photo. Yeah. Of. You cannot. You cannot put other things on top of it either. You oh need my to. Gosh. You need to pretend this photo is the actual the leader, right? And every home in North Korea, we have the portraits of dictators. So when the if the fire caught in the house, the father's first thing they have to protect is the portraits, not their children, not their wife. Because if the portrait gets damaged, then the three generation is going to be punished in that family. So there are so many heroes that we learn, like who somebody was like died with his own body protecting the portrait. And that is the most honorable death you can do in North Korea. Like dying for the leader is the honorable death. 
Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.